Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back once again with the Oculus Quest virtual reality headset. This came out about six months ago and I was totally blown away by how good it was. I was not expecting this to be a great VR experience given that it is all self-contained, but it really was and still is a very good VR device for consumers that are looking for something that's easy without a lot of aggravation. You take it out of the box, you put it on your head, and you've got really compelling VR for well under $500. In fact, this thing sells for $399 in its base configuration. And the other day, Oculus pushed down an update that adds more value to this because if you plug it into a PC now, you can use it as a PC VR headset and gain all of the advantages of having a more powerful computer driving your VR experience. And then when you're done, you unplug it and it goes back to being a standalone device again. And I think for all those reasons, uh, this thing is really the VR headset to get right now if you are not a super techie user. If you just want something that works, that has the option uh, to go to a more complex VR platform, you can do that here with a single device versus having to buy two. And what we're going to be doing in this video is looking at this new PC feature, uh, specifically what you need to make it work, both on the cabling side, but also on the computer side. I'll also give you some impressions as to what it's like to use this as a PC headset versus one of the other dedicated PC devices. And I'll take some of your questions down in the comments section and maybe we'll do a follow-up video or cover something on my weekly wrap-up video that we do every Monday night. Uh, so we're going to get into this now in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the VR headset here with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this overview, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new PC experience is all about. Now, in order to get this to work, you will likely have to pick up another cable. The cable that comes with the Quest will not work with the Quest Link feature. Uh, so the cable that I bought is the one everyone else has been getting, which is from Anchor here. This is their 56K ohm USB-C to USB 3.0 cable. This end goes into the PC and this one plugs into the headset. Uh, it's well under $20 for the 10 foot version, uh, but you might find these coming in and out of stock because every Quest owner has been gobbling these things up. And the longest one I could get at the moment is six feet. Uh, but there are 10 foot versions available that I'm guessing will be back in stock soon once Anchor uh, is able to keep up with the uh, demand for them. Now, what I've been using in addition to this cable is this extension cable that I got for another VR headset that I was using with my PC. And this one has been working fine, but not with all of my computers. So with my desktop machine upstairs, the extension cable here is working fine with the Anchor cable but my gaming laptop over there, which is what we'll be using in this video, doesn't like the extension cable. So you're gonna have to experiment with different cable combinations and see what works best on your particular configuration. I did find though that the anchor cable on its own worked fine on the laptop. It just did not work once I introduced that longer cable into the mix. Now, speaking of computers, uh, you still need a powerful PC to make all of this work. Uh, my recommendation would be at a minimum an NVIDIA GTX 1060 powered PC. And I'm going to put a link to a support document on the Oculus website that lists all of the compatible GPUs that you need inside of your computer to make this all work. Uh, at the moment, AMD is not supported, but I believe it will be in the future. Uh, most of the NVIDIA 10 and 20 series GPUs also work with it. But just be sure if you're making a buying decision based on this feature, that you have a compatible computer before you jump into it. And I would strongly suggest checking out that support article before you take the leap. So if you have all the right components here, uh, let's take a look now at what the experience is when you plug this into your PC. Uh, we'll be using an Alienware laptop today that has a GTX 1070 chip inside of it. And that's also the machine we use to grab all of the footage that you are seeing here in this video. So let's hook this thing up and see how it works. All right, so we've got our headset in standalone mode right now, and I'm going to take out the USB 3.0 to USB-C cable and attach it to the side of the headset. And when I do that, it's going to uh, maybe ask us this data question, but it's also going to ask us about enabling Oculus Link. And if we click enable here, what's going to happen is the headset will shift modes 
and now we are in the Oculus PC experience and that's how easy this is to get working. Now if you see your headset not asking you about the Quest Link mode or if you see the headset maybe going in and out then you've got a cabling problem. I would try a different USB port first and if that doesn't work I would try switching out cables if you're you know, using a cable that may not be the one that people are recommending here. Uh, but as you can see now the PC is driving the experience and we're uh, streaming this to an NVIDIA Shield so we can get all of this to work. Uh, so now what I can do is start loading up Oculus PC titles and you'll notice that Vader Immortal is on here uh, because there are a number of Oculus games that you can buy on the Quest that you'll also get for the PC for the same uh, purchase so you don't have to buy it a second time. Not every game has that, but some of the, the good ones do. Uh, so the Vader Immortal series will work on both. So you can maybe start on one and finish up on the other or something like that. Uh, and of course, we'll take a look at some footage of that in a few minutes. Now, the other cool thing here, if I can get my controller to work on the side, is that this is also compatible with Steam VR. And of course, Steam has a very robust VR library. So what happens here after you get the uh, Oculus interface up and running is you execute the Steam VR option here and what that's going to do is load up the Steam environment. So it's kind of a meta thing where you're jumping from Oculus to Steam uh, but you can get all of your Steam PC games to run on here in addition again to all the Oculus stuff that you purchased. It does take a minute for everything to boot up here but in a second uh, you're going to see the Steam VR interface appear on screen and I'll have my uh, home screen running here. Let me just move the controller out of the way because I'm holding things off to the side. Uh, and if I had a slightly faster computer, of course, this would probably boot up quicker. But if you've ever used Steam Home before, this is going to look very familiar to you. And you can do everything you were going to be doing with your PC-based headset, but now uh, using your Quest. And if I decided I'm done with the PC experience here and just want to disconnect, I can unplug the cable here. Uh, the Quest immediately goes back to its standalone mode and you are able to roam around with it again. So it's a very easy transition provided you have all of the right pieces in place uh, to make it work. I found the Chromecasting for the most part works pretty well also. And as you'll see here when we start going through some of the uh, screen grabs we did of our sessions earlier, it actually gives you a full screen properly adjusted image that's not all fish-eyed as well. So it's a really good uh, streaming experience in addition to a good experience inside the headset. Now before we jump into some gameplay footage, I do want to let you know that the image quality out of the Quest in link mode to the PC is not as good as what you would get out of a dedicated PC headset, but it is very close. And there's a couple of reasons why the image quality will differ a bit. Uh, the first is that the Oculus Quest has a 72 hertz refresh rate versus 90 hertz on most PC headsets. And that will mean that a dedicated PC headset like a Vive or a Vive Pro or the older Oculus headset will just feel smoother because it's delivering more frames per second to the display. Uh, this one, because its dedicated internals are not all that powerful, is pretty much locked at 72. So that 20 frames per second might be noticeable to someone who's been using a PC headset for a while, but it probably won't be that much of an issue for someone that hasn't done much with PC VR in the past, but just know that that's one differentiating factor here in image quality. Uh, the other is that all of the visual data is being delivered over the USB port, and it's being processed and streamed by the PC first. And that means the images are going to look a little softer than they might with a PC headset that usually has its own dedicated display port or HDMI connection for the video. So I've noticed some softness in the images, but it's not bad overall. It just doesn't look as good as my Vive Pro headset does. But the resolution of the Oculus Quest here is actually better than the Rift S. It's 1440 by 1600 on each eye. Uh, versus 1280 by 1440 on the Rift S. So slightly better resolution, but again, a softer image that runs at a lower frame rate. But it's still pretty darn good. So let's have a look and see how some of these games run. We're going to start off here with Beat Saber. Uh, this is the PC version of Beat Saber. You can, of course, get this on the Quest as well. 
and I wanted to see what the latency was like given that there was all this processing going on. And as I was playing it, it wasn't bad. It actually felt pretty close to what I experienced on the PC. Maybe just a little bit of noticeable lag uh, when I'm moving my hands around, but I wasn't feeling myself getting sick at all as I was moving my head back and forth quickly and I was able to play Beat Saber as bad as I usually do uh, when I'm playing on my dedicated PC VR rig upstairs. Now one thing to note as you're watching this footage is that we were capturing the Oculus output with the Chromecasting feature, uh, so it's likely that it's out of sync with what my camera was picking up and capturing at the same time. So just take my word for it on the lag, it is very, very minimal. I was really surprised by how close this felt to my regular PC VR experience. And I think for a lot of folks that haven't ever used PC VR before, this is going to feel great. And again, a really good experience overall. Now, if you're curious about the Guardian that you set up to define your boundary that you can walk around in, uh, you do need to establish the Guardian uh, when the Quest is running in standalone mode first. After the Guardian's established, you plug in and then uh, your PC experience will follow the Guardian that you established uh, with the headset initially in its standalone mode. All right, next up is the Vader Immortal game, but the PC version of it. Uh, this is one of the cross-buy games, so if you bought it on your Quest, you'll have it available on the PC. And the graphics definitely looked better uh, running it through the PC versus the Quest, but I was surprised by how good the Quest version is in comparison. Uh, but if you wanted to re-experience Vader Immortal with a bit more of a sheen to it, uh, you can put it into high graphics mode and get a better Vader Immortal experience through your PC, provided your hardware is up to snuff, and that was a great experience overall. I took a look at a few other games that I've been playing on the PC side a lot just to get a feel for it. Uh, this is Operation Warcade, which begins as like an Operation Wolf clone where you're playing on an arcade machine, and then you get immersed into the game itself, and it was running great on here. Again, a little softer versus my regular PC VR headset setup, but still a great experience, and this is one game that you can't get on the Quest side. Now this next one is Pixel Ripped 1989, and this is a really neat VR experience because you are a character playing this Game Boy, uh, but you're in a virtual environment trying to distract your teacher while you're playing the game. So you're throwing spitballs across the classroom uh, while looking at this two-dimensional game that you're playing at the same time. A really unique uh, VR experience that played great here on the Quest no issues there. And by the way, most of the games you're seeing here are running through Steam VR. Only the Vader game we were running directly through Oculus. So it really just doesn't seem to matter whether or not you buy a game directly from Oculus or get it through Steam if it's available on both. I also took a look at a couple of other really demanding games. The first was No Man's Sky, uh, which is one of my favorite PC games at the moment. Uh, the game's great on its own on a regular screen, but you can also jump into this incredibly immersive universe in virtual reality, and it was running very nicely on the Quest. I did notice here that there were a few issues with tracking, um, so occasionally things might get a little wobbly on you, and I think this might just be part of the beta that I'm experiencing with that, but I was noticing a little bit of weirdness here or there uh, when I was in a few PC titles, and uh, No Man's Sky was one that had a few issues here and there, but not bad. Uh, no Man's Sky, by the way, is a game that has a lot of softness to the images already, and the added softness from the video processing did blur things up a bit, and I also had to turn the graphics quality down on my uh, laptop that I was running it with, too. So it wasn't the best-looking version of No Man's Sky I've played in VR, but it's certainly very good and much better than the PlayStation version would be, for example. And if you've been playing No Man's Sky at all, I think you're going to love it uh, on the PC in VR. It's really spectacular. Now, a bunch of viewers asked me to check out a flight simulator. So here we are running X-Plane, uh, which has a great VR mode that's incredibly demanding. So I ran this on my gaming PC upstairs and Chromecasted out of the Quest to my NVIDIA Shield for recording. So the images are going to look uh, really soft here. Uh, and note, as I was playing the simulator, the images were very soft to begin with. And that was one thing I noticed right away when I tried the Quest versus my Vive Pro that I typically use. And X-Plane's a game where you need a little bit more sharpness because you're reading instruments, you're trying to find features on the ground as you're flying, and that was one thing that I noticed right away on the Quest versus my uh, Vive Pro dedicated device. 
Uh, so I think if you are looking at a flight simulator, uh, you'll probably want to go with a dedicated PC headset just to get the sharpness that you need to really get the experience that you're looking for. Uh, I did also find that some of the tracking glitchiness in Link right now was very evident uh, here on X-Plane. And this is a motion sickness inducing game to begin with. So if you're prone to that, I think you would not want to put the quest on at the moment and uh, run the flight simulator because it was getting a little glitchy even when I was sitting still. Although things did smooth out uh, the longer I had it running and I was able to control the plane fairly well with both the VR controls and my little flight yoke that I got. Uh, I am not a pilot. I haven't taken flight lessons yet, which is why this landing you're watching is so terrible. Uh, but maybe one day I'll start taking some flying lessons and do a little bit better. But my landings have improved dramatically since I started playing with X-Plane. So maybe I've got some uh, hope for uh, safe landings in the future. So really not a good flight simulator device, but I think good for a lot of the other stuff that we played with. Now you might be wondering about battery life over that USB cable, and it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, so on my desktop PC, I saw very little to no degradation of the battery while I was using it. On my laptop, which may not be able to provide enough power over that USB port, I saw a little bit of degradation, about 15% over the two hours that I was playing with it. So you'll definitely get more life out of the Quest when it's in link mode, but the battery might be used depending on your USB situation. So overall, the Quest Link feature is not going to be as good as a dedicated PC headset, but it's going to be very close. And I think it's going to be close enough for most consumers to be pretty okay with it. And of course, you've got the added value of a built-in dedicated VR system inside of the headset. So if you don't yet have a gaming PC and are thinking about getting one, if you own this, you've got VR out of the box, and then down the road, you can just plug it into your PC and get a VR experience through your higher-powered computer. Uh, the other thing about this is that it will run all of the Oculus Rift software on the PC when it's connected. And Oculus has a pretty large library of dedicated applications to its platform. You can often run those Oculus games on other headsets with some added software, but of course that adds aggravation. Here you've got essentially a Rift and a Quest in one device, single cable, plug it in, and you are up and running for the most part. And I think they are doing a lot of great work here, trying to find something that might work for consumers. And I think this is probably going to be the start of something that does. So as a dedicated device, it's great. As a PC device, it's good. And I think those two things combined make this the headset of the year, again, for most casual users. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and definitely check out my review of the Quest so you can see how it works by itself. And until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.